Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias Antioch and Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today's Tuesday, November 5th, 2024, and here are the readings for today. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Hebrews, chapter 8, verses 1 through 6. Brethren, we have such a high priest, one who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven, a minister in the sanctuary in a true tent, which is set up not by man, but by the Lord. For every high priest is appointed to offer gifts and sacrifices. Hence, it is necessary for this priest also to have something to offer. Now, if he were on earth, he would not be a priest at all, since there are priests who offer gifts according to the law. They serve a copy and shadow of the heavenly sanctuary. For when Moses was about to erect the tent, he was instructed by God, saying, See that you make everything according to the pattern which was shown you on the mountain. But as it is, he has obtained a ministry which is as much more excellent than the old as the covenant he mediates is better since it is enacted on better promises. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 12, verses 8 through 12. Let us be attentive. The Lord said to his disciples, Everyone who acknowledges me before men, the Son of Man will also acknowledge before the angels of God. But he who denies me before men will be denied before the angels of God. And everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But he who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. And when they bring you before the synagogues and the rulers and authorities, do not be anxious how or what you are to answer, or what you are to say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee. One of the questions that's frequently asked of our Lord is, Master, or good teacher, or rabbi, or whatever, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And so our Lord has many different ways that he answers this, usually around the idea of loving your God with your whole heart, with your mind, your soul, and your strength, and loving your neighbor as yourself. And then it goes on from there. This I've done for my youth up, or who's my neighbor, or however those questions manage to appear. But one of the things that's pretty clear in all of this is that our Lord has provided the information that's necessary in order for that question to be answered and for order for people to know what they need to do in order that they may indeed inherit eternal life. So today in the Gospel of St. Luke, what we see is our Lord's warning Okay? It's not like he hasn't already given us all the materials we need to do what we're supposed to do. But in addition to that, he tells us what is coming. Well, what is coming, whether we are ready or not. And so in today's reading, we see that the master has already given the assignments for the, the servants and the stewards to perform. They know what their tasks are, but the master is delayed. However, that doesn't mean anything in our case, because even though he's delayed, that does not mean that we should stop doing what we are expected to be doing. And so he has in this, if the servant says to him, my master is delayed in coming, and begins to maltreat, to beat the manservants and the maidservants, and to eat and get drunk. And the master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect, and an hour that he does not know. And the steward will be punished violently. The servant who knew his master's will, and did not make ready or act according to his will, shall receive a severe beating. So those of us who know what we are supposed to do, even though the instructions were given to us and our ancestors thousands of years ago, we still know what we are expected to be doing. And what are we supposed to be doing? The Sermon on the Mount 
and gives pointer after pointer after pointer. Just look at the Beatitudes, for starters. Look at the idea of turning the other cheek, walking the extra mile, not judging, forgiving beyond the capacity for humans to generally forgive. These are all things that we are expected to do. We are the stewards, and we should be doing these things routinely. We live in a time when we have begun to distort the Christian message. Instead of just doing the things that we are called to do as followers of Christ, we instead just use the name of the Lord as if that's some kind of magic token to bring about our safety and our salvation. And then we can go and do whatever it is that we wish to do, re disregarding completely what he instructed us to do. Matthew 25. Those things that you have done for these, the least of my brethren, you have done also for me. We are not absolved from our responsibilities because he is delayed in coming. Moreover, we need to make sure that we are bearing fruits worthy of our high calling. And if we do not, then we will be like these foolish stewards who are beaten mercilessly because we know what's right and what's wrong and we still do what's wrong. Those who do wrong but did not know will not be punished as severely, but they still will be punished. And then our Lord has, in this great passage at the end, he says, Everyone to whom much is given, of him much will be required. And of him to whom men commit much, they will demand the more. This is the message that all of us who call ourselves Christians, especially those of us who read the scriptures consistently, study the word of God and the church's history and the church's activity in the world, if we take these things seriously, then we need to understand that if we do not follow them, then the judgment will fall on us. And it will not be a happy time for us at all. So this is the warning that we have received. We are not to live our lives as if just calling ourselves a Christian is enough. We should go and bear fruit to be the good stewards that our master expects us to be so that when he does come back and we are called to account for the things that we have done, may the things that we have done be worthy of his commendation of us. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Have a great day, and God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.